and to towards a common goal and to feel fulfilled and 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 so those large scale projects are important to do partly for that reason as a demonstration that that can happen and they're increasingly difficult I think to get done because uh, and that w that does worry me about in fact that's when we talk about the potential death of physics if we want to move forward in some of these grand areas the infrastructure requirements become so great the complexity of the structures becomes so great that it's not clear to me that we have either the societal base or the international base to sustain it also the time period it's not five years it may not be ten years it may be fifty years yeah. can we as a certainly in the United States we've demonstrated we can't in general do it we alone. We did gravity per B. I mean that was something. I mean yeah. it was something. And, yeah. and and it was something that I was you know, I, I was intrigued to be have, a have been of. a small part of and have felt that. But but in terms of what questions became interesting, it, you know, these material questions of how do we really ask interesting questions, how do we organize so social and tec technical resources, who dominate you know, who gets to decide, who gets to participate who gets to call it truth? And, and what I became fascinated with was the socio-technical production, right? The, as opposed to the, the theoretical physics questions that were less, became less interesting sure. to me than, than what I thought would be. So I think this question of who participates and how is the one that we're, that, you know, that we're asking right now. And, and, we're, and we have different approaches, but they're not that different. I think we're trying to get, I think both of our goals, in some sense, in, outside of, I, and I, it's interesting, I say this, I'm going to say outside of my professional activities, because in some sense my professional activity is to do what I do as a scientist, but a vital part of my goal, which for, for whatever reason is considered outside of that activity, is to increase the participation at one level or another. Right, and right. but participation in science versus participation in being able to ask or draw on independent questions. And, and one of the projects that I um, did recently in response to the, um, the current administration um, was to do with air quality and mm -hmm. air quality being one of the things that affects my clone trees yeah, and of sure. course our children and our grandparents and um, uh, and is of considerable political interest but is based on scientific questions we you know what's the problem here sure um, and what I found really interesting about the current administration is its capacity to call the dismantling of the Clean Air right. Act the Clear Skies yeah, Initiative, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. So this is what the double speak <laughs> that, we're, that we're in, and you know, and in fact, in the 70s, it was, you know, peace protests or sort of people who had, um, you know, s interesting slogans, smart sure. slogans, were able to do something like yeah. imagine peace, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, then what, right? Or stop Bush? Yeah. Or, you know, as a bumper sticker. Well, how, right? Yeah. They're, they're not sufficient by themselves any much bec because we have an administration that's very sophisticated at producing things like the Clear Skies Initiative yeah. as a kind of, you know, words fail us in yeah. some very yeah. real way yeah. in this context. And so, in the popular imagination, in the public, outside of the scientific questions, we need to be able to have allow people to draw on their own material evidence to say, well, is this clear skies or clean air? I mean... <laughs> well, that's part of what I'm saying, though. I think it's, again, saying we're, we, we're getting people to say that the reality that they perceive is not, may not be the right, all there is. And we're forcing people to sort of say, hey, um, things don't have to be this way. Or giving them some way to, without having to get a master's or a PhD in you know, environmental science yeah. or, you know, boundary layer, yeah. physics modeling or something to deal with what it is, you know, you know, some way to have access to material evidence without having to publish a peer-reviewed paper. And that's, that's where in kind of the cultural work, um, scientific, science has a monopoly on material evidence, right? So, so uh, it's interesting, I hadn't thought of it that way. In some sense, you're saying art, to the extent you call it art, I don't know whether you want to call it that, gives people a, um, an opportunity to experience science that's, that the traditional scientific uh, um, methodologies may not, and, and sociology may not, that, that through art you can get people to participate in a what, it, what you would say is a scientific experience. 
Would you say to some extent that's what you're trying to do? Uh, to draw on material forms of evidence, so like, like yeah. physicists do, to, you know, to actually test their ideas against the stuff around them. So right? could I sum it by saying using art to seduce people to... <laughs>